Hi everyone, am I live? Perfect, perfect. Hi Manish, very good morning. Hi Shruti. Shruti is with me every day. Very good morning, very good morning everyone. I am live. All right. Good morning everyone. Very good morning. So, ready for this chapter everyone? NCRT line by line. Ready for this chapter? Hi Hari. Everyone ready? Very good morning everyone. Everyone ready with your NCRT textbooks? Perfect. With your NCRT textbooks. Good morning everyone. Alrighty. Excited for genetics. Let's do this together. Okay. Let's do this together. We give us a, we give us a time and uh, about one and a half hour kids. And we will complete NCRT line by line. Of this chapter, huge chapter. Do you agree with me? Both bada chapter, ma'am. Two big chapter. Very big chapter, ma'am. Very big chapter. Everyone ready? NCRT line by line, molecular basis of inheritance. Let us begin. All of you, um, excellent job for coming here early in the morning. Super awesome work. And a main chapter too. Yes, Ashna, absolutely. So, um, all of you who are new here, let me just quickly introduce you to myself. I'm Dr. Sindhu, need zoology expert at Vedantu. I have done my BHMS from D.Y. Patel College in Pune. And I am a proud, proud mentor of several kids who have already made it, uh, who have already become doctors, are becoming doctors right now. And I've been mentoring them and from the past 10 straight years for need zoology. So yes, everyone, welcome to this super awesome class where we're going to cover the whole chapter NCRT line by line today. Yes, everyone. 10 questions last year. Very important. Yes. Okay, kids, just to let you know, there is a neat mock test um, in the description box mentioned below. You can go ahead. You can solve it any time of the day that you want to. Also, one very, very important news is coming up. I want you all to stay with me until the end. I've got a super awesome news for you guys. So are you guys with me and will you stay with me till the end? Because I have a super announcement to be making for you at the end of today's class. Yes or no? Everyone will stay with me till the end of the class today because I've got a huge announcement to make just for all of you who are appearing neat in 2022. Yes, everyone. Perfect. All righty. So let us start. Let us start and we will start and we will quickly go directly into the important parts just like we've done so in all the chapters. Come on, quiz. Beta, last year from this chapter, around 10 questions came. So you know how important this chapter is. Genetics is super, 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 plus, 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 plus important. So you guys know how important this is and let us kill it. Let's do NCRT. Let's decode NCRT so that there is nothing that you do not read when you are sitting and reading on your own. Fine. I've got so many messages where kids have been telling me that uh, this series have helped them because it's it's a little boring maybe at this time to sit and read the whole chapters on your own. So kids, we are with you. You just need to be, you just need to stay with us. We're coming with all the important questions also with you for our, on our IDOC series. So just be consistent. Fine. That's all that's needed right now. You have worked very hard from the past two years. Now is the time where you just need some consistency and you will pull through. Yes, everyone. Let us begin. So first of all. Okay, let's, let's not ignore the basics. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. It is the genetic material for majority of the animals. Please let me know if the screen is too small. I hope that you're all able to see it. Okay, it is the genetic material for most of the organisms. Although are they, uh, RNA also acts as a genetic material in some viruses. Okay, but... RNA, mostly the function of RNA is what is as a messenger. Everyone will remember with me. Who is DNA? 
Who is DNA? DNA is Dadaji. DNA is Dadaji. Dadaji is the one who is going to be storing all the genetic information. Then who is RNA? My kids will tell me. My kids will tell me who is RNA. My, all my children will tell me who is RNA. Yes, RNA is your rowdy teenager. RNA is your rowdy teenager. Yes or no? DNA is Dadaji. RNA is your rowdy teenager. Dadaji is the one who is going to be storing the information. The RNA is the one who is going to be taking the information from here and there, here and there. Because that's what a teenager does. Can you, can you trust a teenager with all of your bank balance? No. You will trust Dadaji. So Dadaji is going to have all your genetic material. But then carrying information from Dadaji and going to other places that you can give the teenager. Nahi to fir wo karega kya life mein? Fine. So DNA is Dadaji. RNA is your rowdy teenager. Now your um, RNA is functioning mostly, mostly as a messenger. Fine. RNA also has some other roles. We see this in the chapter. It behaves as an adapter. It has a structural role because it's making the ribosome. And also as a catalytic molecule. Tell me what is the name of the enzyme. Tell me what is the name of the enzyme which is RNA. Tell me what is the name of the enzyme which is a nucleic acid and not a protein. What is the name of the enzyme? Ribozyme. Very good Ashna. Excellent. It is called as ribozyme. Excellent. Alright. So that is one enzyme that is not a protein. Now we continue ahead that we are going to study in this chapter. Kya kya padha is chapter mein? What all? Ma'am what not we studied. Oh my god. Structure of DNA. Replication. Making RNA from DNA. That is transcription. We learned about genetic code. Then sequences of amino acids in proteins. Protein synthesis. That is translation. Correct. All of this and more. And more to log likhenge ne. They will not write and more. But we know that we have done much more than this. Right kids. So. Let us continue now coming to the first, first important point and that is of DNA. First important point that is of DNA. What is DNA? DNA is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. Okay, it is a long polymer. Now, important points you have to buy heart. You have to buy heart. Characteristics of an organism. Bacteriophage. Bacteriophage phi has 5386 nucleotides. Okay, 5 to 174 has 5386 nucleotides. Bacteriophage lambda has 48502 base pairs. E. coli has 4.6 into 10 raised to 6. Okay, into 10 raised to 6. And haploid human is 3.3 into 10 raised to 9 base pairs. So that means diploid is, diploid is going to be 6.6 .6 into 10 raised to 9 base pairs. That is diploid. Yes or no? That is going to be the diploid content. Absolutely yes, you can attend. Now. Coming next, structure of the polynucleotide chain. What is, what all are the important points here? Look over here. First of all, you have got pentose sugar, two nitrogenous base types, purines, pyrimidines. Purines are what? How many ring? Purines are how many ring? Double. Okay. And pyrimidines are single. Okay, how do you remember pyramidines, purines and pyramidines? Okay, how will you remember them? Purines are adenine and guanine. Okay, pyramidines are cytosine and thymine. So how will you remember this kids? Look at here. Y, Y, Y. They all three have Y. So the, the, the nitrogenous bases which have Y in them are pyramidines. The remaining two are purines. Nobody will forget that now. Okay. So we have here cytosine. Okay, fine. 
Cytosine is the one which is common for both DNA and RNA. Thymine is present only in DNA. Instead, in RNA, instead of thymine, uracil is present. Fine. Then, nitrogenous base is linked to OH of one carbon, the first carbon pentose sugar. Through a N nitro, through a nitrogenic glycosidic linkage. So, when we are talking about this, okay, what do we have? The different kinds of bonds. Quickly, let's revise that. Quickly, let us revise the different kinds of bonds which are there. Okay, you have a pentose sugar. Fine, you have a pentose sugar, sugar. Then it is attached to a, it is attached to a nitrogenous base. Fine, then you got attached with this. Now you have your phosphate group. So which all, what all are the different, which all are the different bonds that are formed. Here you have your N-glycosidic bond. Fine. Then the bond between the phosphate group and the fifth carbon. When you number the carbon, first, second, third, fourth, fifth carbon. Fine. This bond over here, what is the name of this bond? It is an ester bond. Ester bond. Fine. Then with the third carbon, with the third carbon comes the second ester bond for joining with the next nucleotide. Okay. For joining with the next nucleotide, the second ester bond is going to come. And here is your second nucleotide. I hope this is visible to everyone. Clear to everyone? Yes or no? Is this clear to everyone? Perfect. Alright, the different bonds. Also tell me, also tell me over here, what is making the backbone? What is making the backbone? This is the backbone. Is this clear everyone? This over here which I have highlighted that is the backbone. Okay. Then what are nitrogenous bases? Nitrogenous bases are projections. Okay. Nitrogenous bases are projections. Sugar phosphate backbone. Nitrogenous bases are projections. Clear? Alright. So... Okay, so we are done with this. Now, nucleosides are formed. Look at the names of nucleosides. Adenosine or if it is DNA, deoxyadenosine. Guanosine or deoxyguanosine. Cytidine or deoxycytidine. Uridine or deoxythymidine. Okay, because in RNA it will be uracil and in DNA it will be thymine. thymine. Fine? Alright. Now when you link it with, when you link it with phosphate group at the fifth carbon then with a phosphoester linkage then you get to form what is formed nucleotide is going to be formed fine two nucleotides are linked to three dash pi dash phosphodiester linkage we just spoke about this of the three dash three dash and the pi dash okay phosphodiester linkage so here is one phosphodiester bond here is the second phosphodiester bond fine kids all right. Now tell me, what about the polarity? What is free at phi dash end? Free, what is found to be free? Free at phi dash end. What is free at 3 dash end? Quickly, what is free at phi dash end? What is free at 3 dash end? Quickly tell me. Free at phi dash end is going to be the free phosphate. Very good. The free phosphate and at OH and at 3 dash end it will be free OH. Please remember this kids. Please remember this. Fine. Alright. So phosphate moiety at phi dash end. Okay. Which is referred to the phi prime end of the polynucleotide chain. And at the end of the sugar which has a free OH it is the 3 dash end. Okay. Clear. Now let's come to RNA. In RNA, it has an additional OH group present at second position of the ribose. So the difference between DNA and RNA in the structure, 
structural difference between DNA and RNA. What is it going to be? At which carbon is the structural difference seen? At which carbon? First, second, third, fourth and fifth. First, second, third, fourth and fifth. Okay? Alright. So what is the major difference? Here it will be OH. Here it will be H. Yes? So this is going to be your RNA and this is going to be your DNA. One oxygen less. One oxygen less. Clear everyone? Now is it visible? Very good Samiha. Okay? Perfect. Alright. Let's continue class. Now we come to the first person who identified, first person who identified DNA, Frederick Meister in 1869. He called DNA first as nuclein. Okay? But could he further find out about it? No. He could not further find out about it. Okay? So, the structure of DNA remained elusive for a long period of time. Then, who came? 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick. Okay? He, who helped James Watson and Francis Crick? Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. Okay? So, whenever we talk about DNA structure, um, finding out of DNA structure, James Watson, Francis Crick, Morris Wilkins, Rosalind Franklin. One more person, everyone will tell me in the chat box. Who is that one more person who helped in identifying and describing the structure of DNA? Double helix. One more, Irvin Shargaff. Irvin Shargaff. Fine. What did Irvin Shargaff say? That for a double-stranded DNA, for a double-stranded DNA, the ratios between adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine are constant and equals 1. The ratios also equals 1 for a DNA double-stranded molecule. If the ratios do not equal 1, if the ratios are not constant, if MCQs come like that, you will say it is not a double-stranded DNA, it will be a single-stranded DNA molecule. Alright? Yes, everyone? It will be a single-stranded. Perfect, Nishta. Excellent, kids. Alright. Now, let's go ahead. We also see... Base pairing confers very unique property to polynucleotide. Correct? So, what are the salient features? First of all, it is made up of two polynucleotide chain. Okay? Backbone, you guys know? Backbone, you guys know. Okay? Sugar phosphate. Then, they are anti-parallel polarity. Then, the bases are joined by hydrogen bonds. The two strands are joined with the help of hydrogen bonds and they form base pairs. Okay, kids? So, when you have this structure, when you have this structure, this is one base pair. Okay? And it has two bases. Fine? Alright. So, we see here adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with thymine. And guanine is bonded with three hydrogen bonds. Alright. So purine always comes opposite to a pyramidine. Then the two chains are coiled in a right handed fashion. The pitch of the helix is 3.4 nanometers. 3.4 nanometers and each pitch has how many base pairs? Everyone each pitch is having how many base pairs? Who will tell me? Roughly 10 base pairs. Each pitch has 10 base pairs. Very good class. Okay. Ye conversion. Just watch this conversion. Nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter. That is 10 raised to minus 9 meters. Okay. Maths to you guys are better than me. Much, much far better than me. Hena class? Alright. So, consequently we see that the distance between two base pairs in a helix is how much? Distance between two base pairs is 0 0.34 nanometers. Fine. Now, stability of the helical structure. What is giving stability of the helical structure? What is it? 
the base pair which is stacking one upon the other one upon the other is giving stability to that helical structure and that is here one base pair stacks over the other in the double helix and also hydrogen bonds are there both of these are allowing the helical structure to be stable fine helical structure to be stable all right now very very i don't know how many times very i should say for this very important very important central dogma first is dna replication then dna is going to pass on dada ji passes all information to the rowdy teenager this is what we call as transcription okay how will you remember this trans trans first comes scription later comes lation okay first is transcription later comes translation translation is when that rowdy teenager will use all the information given by dada ji come out go to the ribosome and start making proteins so that rowdy teenager will take all the information from his dada ji go out of the house and start making money what is money here proteins he starts making proteins am i clear everyone is this clear everyone all right so that is what we call as central dogma mrna messenger messenger rna messenger rna perfect now what do we see ahead packaging of dna helix come on quickly we'll finish all this packaging of dna helix we see that over here this is a nucleosome what is found what is the nucleosome made up of this over here is the octamer okay octamer okay there are h2 h3 h4 two of each correct h2 two of h2 two of h3 two of h4 then outside here to hold everything together h1 to hold everything together holds everything together and what is this dna fine the whole thing is what we call as a nucleo so the whole thing is called as a nucleo so dna is negatively charged and the histone is positively charged okay histone is positively charged so we see here distance between two base pairs 0.34 then length is going to be calculated by how do you calculate the length of dna molecule you will multiply total number of base pairs with distance between two base pairs total number of base pairs into two in the into the distance between them how many base pairs in human deployed cell 6.6 into 10 raised to 9 distance between two 0.34 so total human deployed um, dna is going to be 2.2 meters 2.2 meters clear all right in prokaryotes they don't have a defined nucleus so d but still dna is not scattered okay because it is held together with proteins do prokaryotes have histones do prokaryotes have histones no in eukaryotes it is held together with histones fine histone octamer is formed with eight histone proteins okay the negatively charged dna wrapped around positively charged histone octamer to form nucleosome how many base pairs does a nucleosome contain 200 base pairs 200 base pairs okay chromatin If all the nucleosomes repeating 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 is called as chromatin all right and it is seen as beads on a string structure when viewed under electron microscope all right now we see that um they can be condensed okay beads on a string is packaged to form chromatin fibers they are coiled and condensed at metaphase all right okay now also some additional proteins additional proteins called as non histone chromosomal proteins are used for packaging then you have u chromatin what is u chromatin what is heterochromatin u u chromatin is going to be the true so it is the one which is going to translation 
it's going to perform translationally active translationally active okay and it is going to be staining light light stained okay then hetero heterochromatin heterochromatin is going to be the one which is transcriptionally inactive transcriptionally inactive and it is densely stained it is densely stained okay these are tightly packaged is this clear tightly packaged perfect you <laughs> chromatin summer clothes very good logol sessions yaad aa rahe i'm happy all right chalo the search for the genetic material let us begin search for genetic material fine all right who are we talking about here even though discovery of nucleon by mesher and inheritance by mendel were almost at the same time but but in 1926 but what do we see here yeah the, the fact that dna is a genetic material took a very long time to be proven so dna hai this everybody knew but dna is a genetic material this nobody knew fine so by 1926 the quest to determine the mechanism for genetic inheritance reached the molecular level okay all right it needs to reach the molecular level let us now begin with the first experiment griffith's experiment now there are two experiments or rather three experiments when we want to do this okay three experiments which were they for dna genetic material which were the three experiments kids one griffith griffith okay two avery okay and three hershey and chase fine in griffith's experiment what do we do transformation transformation fine in avery and mcloyd and mccarty enzymes are used enzymes are used in hershey and chase experiment what is used hershey and chase bacteriophage bacteriophage is used perfect now in transformation what do we see griffith's experiment transformation fine i guess this is okay this is okay we used streptococcus pneumoniae fine let us now continue with the textbook chalo everyone start now frederick griffith in 1928 experiments with streptococcus pneumoniae streptococcus was previously called as diplococcus so agar diplococcus aaya that is also correct fine this is a bacteria responsible for pneumonia it uh, okay next is going to be when the bacteria are grown on culture plate okay tell me what all are the different um, what all did we see here quickly let's revise this kids what all did we see here in the experiments who will tell me first is first is r strain r strain is rough okay no capsule okay s strain is smooth with capsule with capsule fine so r strain put in mice what happens mice lives okay s strain in mice mice dies then what did they do heat then what did they do what is next heat kill s strain what do we have put it in mice what happens mice lives yes or no then heat killed 
S plus R strain. What happens? Put it in mice. What happens? Mice lives. Sorry. Mice dies. Okay. What can you conclude out of this? What do we conclude out of this? Therefore, what do we conclude out of this? Therefore, our strain was transformed to S strain. And that's why mice dies. Okay. All right. So something was transformed. Transformation happened. But what was transformed was not there. Was not found. Okay. So what did he conclude? He concluded that our strain had somehow been transformed by heat killed bacteria. Okay. Some kind of transforming principle transferred from the heat killed S strain enabled the R strain to synthesize smooth polysaccharide coat. Capsule was made up of polysaccharide and it became virulent. Okay. This might be due to transfer of genetic material. But the nature of the genetic material was not defined. Something was transferring. But what was it that was transferring? That was not. Poor mice. Poor mice. All right. Now, next we have Avery McLeod and McCarty. Avery McLeod and McCarty. Okay. They worked on what? What did they work on? They worked on heat killed S cells. They worked on heat killed S cells. Okay. The ones which could transform R cells to S cells. The heat killed ones. Fine. What did the enzymes, which enzymes did they work with? Protein digesting enzymes, proteases, RNA digestive enzymes, RNases did not affect transformation. Which enzyme affected transformation? DNAs. DNAs enzyme inhibited transformation suggesting that DNA caused the transformation. Still, all biologists were not convinced. So comes the unequivocal proof unequivocal without any doubt that DNA is genetic material by Hershey and Chase. Okay. Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase in the year 1952. Okay. What did they work on? They worked on viruses that infect bacteria. We call them as bacteriophages. We call them as bacteriophages. Fine. Okay. Now when this experiment comes, all of you get Super, super confused. Why? Okay, tell me one thing. In this experiment, when we talk about DNA, in this experiment, when we talk about DNA, what is going to be showing up? Radioactive what? Radioactive what? And when we talk about protein, when we talk about protein, it is radioactive what? Tell me that, kids. DNA and protein. DNA is going to be radioactive. DNA is going to show radioactive phosphate okay and protein is going to be showing radioactive sulfur because proteins have disulfide bonds radioactive sulfur perfect hi Shreya excellent excellent okay all right so this is one thing major thing you needed to remember DNA is radioactive phosphate protein is radioactive sulfur now Bacteriophage attaches to the bacteria, genetic material enters in, bacterial cell treats the viral genetic material as if its own. So, the virus is going to multiply in the bacteria because bacteria is going to treat the virus genome also. So, let's start multiplying. Alright. So, they grew, they grew viruses on a medium that contained radioactive phosphorus and also radioactive sulfur. Alright. So, Radioactive phosphorus contained radioactive DNA. Okay. And radioactive sulfur contained radioactive protein. Clear? Clear? Now, then we see here that radioactive phages. 
they were attached to E. coli. All of these were attached to E. coli and infection happened. What did we see in the infection? What was seen in the infection? So you, see, you have your two bacteriophages. You have your two bacteriophages over here. This one here, protein coat is, protein coat is radioactive. And over here, DNA is radioactive. Okay. When protein coat is radioactive, then radioactivity stays outside. Radioactivity stays outside. When protein coat is radioactive, the radioactivity stays outside. Correct? Correct? But when DNA is radioactive, the radioactivity enters into the cell. Okay? When DNA is radioactive, the radioactivity enters into the cell. Okay? How is this performed? First infection, bacteriophage attached to E. coli. Bacteriophage attached to E. coli. Then you want to separate. Okay. You want to separate it. To separate virus from bacteria. Okay. To separate them. And then to bring bacteria out. Okay, completely, completely from that whole solution, viruses are removed, bacteriophage is, uh, bacteria is different. That is done by centrifugation. Three steps. One is infection, blending, centrifugation. Now, my last question. My last question. One, sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, sentence four. Which of these sentences, important MCQ, which of these sentences proves that Proves that DNA is the genetic material. Which sentence out of these four proves that DNA is the genetic material? Which one? Which sentence proves that DNA is the genetic material? Yes, it is going to be the third one. The fact that radioactive phosphorus was found inside the cell is proving that DNA is the genetic material. Excellent children. Very good. Now, let's continue ahead. All right. Perfect. So, we see here properties of genetic material. What are the properties? It should be able to replicate its own. Uh, it, it should be able to generate its replica. It should be stable chemically and structurally. It should provide scope for slow changes that is mutation for evolution to take place. And it should be able to express itself in form of Mendelian characters. Fine. Let's continue. Now we see here that both the nucleic acids have the ability to direct their duplications. Okay. Now. We see here the genetic material should be stable. It should not change with life cycle, age or change in physiology. It should not change. So stability is one of the properties of genetic material which was very evident in Griffith's transforming principle. That's why even after heat killing it, it was still stable enough to pass on information to the other organism even after heat killing it. Okay. So the heat killing... Listen here kids, heat killed bacteria did not destroy some properties of the genetic material. Clear? Alright, then we see here, both DNA and RNA are able to mutate. RNA being unstable mutate faster. So viruses have RNA and they have shorter lifespan. They mutate faster, they evolve faster. Fine? Alright, so you have... Um, the different criteria for DNA and RNA of the genetic as being the genetic information of any organism. Fine. Yes, Shruti. OH in RNA in the second position also makes it unstable. And even uracil makes it unstable. Thymine is what contributes to stability of DNA. Also, the stability of DNA comes because of the hydrogen bonds and the nitrogenous bases being stacked one upon the other. All of this. Oh, congratulations, Anushka. Lovely news. Okay. Now, Anushka, gear up for what you've been doing the past two years for. Okay. That should go equally well. 
चलो गाइस लेट्स स्टार्ट नाउ विद आरएनए वर्ल्ड ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आरएनए वाज द फर्स्ट जेनेटिक मटेरियल ओके फर्स्ट जेनेटिक मटेरियल देयर इज इनफ एविडेंस टू शो दैट टू सजेस्ट दैट एसेंशियल लाइफ प्रोसेसेस लाइक मेटाबॉलिज्म ट्रांसलेशन स्प्लाइसिंग इवॉल्व्ड अराउंड आरएनए ओके आरएनए यूज्ड टू एक्ट एज अ जेनेटिक मटेरियल आल्सो एंड एज अ कैटलिस्ट आल्सो फाइन um yes so important biochemical reactions are catalyzed by rna and not by protein enzyme so rna enzyme is going to be ribozyme you all know that then rna being a but rna because it was catalyst it was reactive reactive so unstable that's why dna had to come yes or no my kids will tell me my kids will tell me on the box on the chat box that um what came first man came first then after man came god found out all everything what whatever was uh, you know whatever was there whatever were the flaws so then came woman yes or no no i am not differentiating i am not gender differentiating i am just kidding thank you daksh <laughs> all right let's start now with replication dna replication very simple what is the method what is the method semi conservative method okay it was suggested by watson and crick suggested by watson and crick but who is the one who proved it who is the one who proved it matthew messelson and franklin stahl performed the experiment in 1958 okay matthew messelson and franklin stahl now over here what did they do chalo let's let's take this in a separate page Let's take this in a separate page. Okay, first test tube. Test tube containing test tube containing E. coli. Okay, test tube containing E. coli. Okay, and E. coli. E. coli with N fourteen, N fourteen. Fine. Then what did they do? This was put into this was put into a medium what did the medium contain what did the medium contain medium contained ammonium chloride and which nitrogen which nitrogen was used heavy nitrogen n15 correct these same e coli were put into this medium the same e coli were put into this medium n14 n14 e coli were put into the medium then allowed to replicate for several generations okay replicate they replicated for several generations what was found what was found they put it in which solution which solution cesium chloride solution to centrifuge it what is this solution cesium chloride and they will centrifuge now they will centrifuge now what did they find what did they find on centrifugation they found that there was all n15 n15 find all were n15 n15 now what all were n15 n15 so now they start with they start with now you have e coli with n15 n15 put it in a solution put it in a solution which solution now which solution n14 n14 solution put it in n14 solution okay and one generation 20 minutes what do you see when you centrifuge it what do you see when you put it in cesium chloride what do you see when you put it in cesium chloride everyone yes you are going to find after one generation you have n14 n15 fine now second take the same one 
we'll take the same one and then what put it again in here we go the same is taken put it again put it in ammonium chloride again we put it in ammonium chloride which ammonia or which nitrogen n14 fine put the e coli what do you get in second generation after 40 minutes total 40 minutes total what do you get sorry after 40 minutes total what do you get when you centrifuge it when you centrifuge it what do you get total after 40 minutes you are going to get e coli with some you will get n14 n15 some you will get n14 n14 yes or no 50% 50% clear everyone so let us draw that out okay so if we have here two types of dna okay here you have first okay this is dna which is n15 n15 fine then put it in n14 medium what will you get the dna opens okay and for n14 this is n14 the blue one is n15 then one more time n14 medium n14 medium what do you get the strands first let the strands open up let the strands first open up first the strands open up then we add n14 strand n14 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 so what do we get over here kids you are going to get sorry 50 percent n14 n14 that's these two and 50 percent n14 n15 that's these two all right after how many generations this is first generation this is second generation so after one generation after one generation 100 percent hybrid After one generation, 100% hybrid. After the second generation, you are getting 50 hybrid and 50 the new. Is this clear everyone? Is this clear everyone? Then... Similar experiments, similar experiments involving radioactive thymidine were used to synthesize. Okay, no, we are not doing this. Sorry. Yeah, the same thing, right? Correct. So, you see in this NCRT diagram, NCRT diagram children, look at the diagram. First generation, you start with N15. Okay, after first generation, hybrid. After second generation, that's total of 40 minutes you have 50 percent n14 okay and 50 percent here we go hybrids clear everyone so light and hybrid both are seen after second generation perfect now let's come to uh, the same experiment being conducted by conducted by taylor and colleagues in 1958 but they conducted it on Vicia faba, that is faba beans. Alright, now in living cells like E. coli, process of replication requires set of catalysts. Okay, what is the name of the enzyme? DNA dependent DNA polymerase. What are you making? DNA. So what is the enzyme? DNA polymerase. It is based upon DNA. So DNA dependent DNA polymerase. Fine. Okay, then it uses DNA as a template. To make sure that polymerization is happening. The enzyme. Then enzymes are highly efficient. Why? They have to catalyze polymerization large number of nucleotides in a very short time. Okay. 
so e coli is going to be completing within 18 minutes so that is 2000 base pairs per second which is polymerized okay so they have to be fast also they have to be accurate also all right any mistake leads to mutations fine so we see here deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate like adenosine triphosphate guanosine triphosphate these kind of triphosphates have two functions two functions what are the two functions one it behaves as substrate two it provides energy two functions fine then in addition to this polymerase many additional enzymes are required to complete the process of replication fine now let us begin class replication fork quickly replication fork how will we remember this here we go one strand here okay and the other strand here label it anyhow phi dash three dash three dash phi dash okay uh, uh, the enzyme dna polymerase sorry dna polymerase works in which direction zoopala dna polymerase works in phi dash to three dash direction phi dash to three dash direction so what is the way in which direction is the replication fork opening it's opening in which direction it's opening in this direction yes or no this is how the replication fork is opening so now the dna polymerase enzyme is going to work on the new strand formation so for new strand if a new strand is formed here this will be phi dash this will be three dash again over here if there's a new strand formed this will be three dash over here will be phi dash so the strands will work the enzyme will work in which directions when it goes from here to here okay it is going in the same direction of the fork opening since it goes in the same direction it goes zoop it goes very fast so this is called as the leading or continuous strand okay but then when it has to go again phi dash to 3 dash only but now it is going in the opposite direction and when it goes in the opposite direction it will go with pauses attack 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 ruk ruk taking pauses taking pauses taking pauses it will go ahead so these are what we call as fragments developing you call them as okazaki fragments you call them as okazaki fragments okay okazaki fragments perfect how are you going to open the what are the enzymes here chalo okazaki fragments are forming which strand lagging strand lagging strand and also discontinuous discontinuous strand also discontinuous strand fine then we see here Okay, then we see over here the different enzymes. First, to open the helix. Enzymes, one, opening the helix. Okay, second enzyme, polymerization. And third enzyme, to attach fragments together okay what is this enzyme tell me the names opening the helix helicase very good polymerization dna dependent dna polymerase and attaching the fragments together dna ligase DNA ligase. Fine. Okay. What is used as a primer? What is used as a primer? RNA primer. What is that made up of? Oligonucleotides. 
made up of oligo nucleotides clear everyone very good shruti good nishta oligo nucleotides excellent perfect chalo guys so we are done with this done with this okay um yes 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 all of this is there this is something you guys know from uh, biotechnology requirement of the origin that a piece of dna needs to be propagated during recombinant requires a vector vector will provide the origin of the replication this so you all know from biotech perfect if cell division does not happen after dna this whole process is taking place in which phase s phase this whole process is taking place in s phase of interphase of cell division okay all right now kids who How is the Josh? How is the Josh? Are you guys chapter revise हो रहा है? Are you able to revise the chapter properly? NCERT line by line going good. Yes, class. Go take a water break. Go take a water break. मजा आ रहा है? Enjoying. Thank you, Dak. Still very high, man. perfect okay bahut acche se tomorrow will you guys be with me you know what we're going to revise tomorrow how many of you are going to come with me tomorrow tomorrow what are we going to revise you know what we're going to do tomorrow tell me we are going to learn in which college did i study oh i studied in dy patel college in pune tomorrow we are going to be doing cockroach structure cockroach mcq comes every year no matter how much you hate that small insect it will give you four marks so you better learn it every year one question does come of cockroach every year tomorrow we will do cockroach to together fine same way from ncert manish earthworm lecture i've already taken if you want to you can see in the sessions in uh, nd Who Raj? I am not sure we will. I I am going to. I have already um do. Let's do one thing. Whatever I am going to be taking, I am putting it on um. I am going to be putting it on the elite channel right now. Okay, class. My whole teaching schedule. I am putting it on the elite channel right now. Everyone can just see it. Put a heart on it that you've seen it. Okay. How many of you saw it right now on elite channel? Telegram channel, everyone. I just put it on. Put a heart and show me that you've seen it. I'm from Tamil Nadu. No, I'm just half Tamilian, which doesn't who doesn't know Tamil. <laughs> I'm not from Tamil Nadu. I'm half Tamilian who doesn't know Tamil. Unfortunately. All right. Chalo guys let's begin <laughs> Shall we continue Yes kids shall we continue My mom's Tamil yes Hi Ashna Okay now let's begin with transcription okay So now what is transcription kids all the information which dada ji is having he is going to pass it to his rowdy teenager so copying genetic information from one strand of dna to the rna is called as transcription now tell me quickly when we learn about transcription what are we going to see when we learn about transcription what do we need to remember two dna strands first of all two dna strands two dna strands fine then let's label one as the one is going to be template okay template the one the other one is going to be coding okay now template strand may where are we going to put the promoter if i put my promoter here okay then this means that this is my phi dash end 
automatically everything else is done. 3 dash n, 5 dash n, 3 dash n. Okay. Labeling. Tell me one thing. Labeling is done with reference to which strand? Labeling is done with reference to which strand? Shruti, should I? Yes. With reference to coding strand. With reference to coding strand. Excellent. Okay. So, this is going to be your promoter. This is going to be your promoter. Alright. And this is going to be your terminator. This is going to be your terminator. Sorry kids. Alright. What is the part present in between? In between here. This is going to be what? This is going to be the structural gene. Structural gene. Correct? Okay. Now tell me something about this structural gene. Structural gene is. Structural gene. You can consider it as cistron. You can consider it as cistron. Okay. And cistron is going to be seen. Polycistronic. And mono. Cistronic. Correct? Polycistronic in prokaryotes. Monocystronic in eukaryotes. Oops. Yes. Sorry kids, yaan pe galti ho gai. Maam ka dhyan nahi tha. Sorry kids, yaan pe galti ho gai. 5 dash end, 3 dash end. Okay, so promoter is at 5 dash end of the coding strand. This is 3 dash, this is 5 dash. Yes. Bas, koi batata nahi hai. I was testing how many of you are actually awake. I was testing how many of you are actually awake. All of you are sleeping. You're just telling me hi Josh, hi Josh. You're just sleeping. Yes or no? Now. Yes. So remember this. Polycystronic, prokaryotes, monocystronic and that is eukaryotes. Now tell me. Template strand, if template strand, chalo everybody, if template strand, if template strand is A, T, G, G, C, C, T, then what is going to be coding? Okay, template strand, 3 dash, 5 dash, okay. What is going to be coding strand and what is going to be mRNA? What is going to be coding strand? What is going to be mRNA? Coding strand will be phi dash T A C C G G A 3 dash. Okay, mRNA will be phi dash. Then U A C C G G A three dash. Clear. All right. So kids, we are done with this part. We are done with this part, done with the transcriptional unit, everything we have covered. One thing only I want you to see here that promoter is located phi dash n that is upstream okay, of the structural gene and um, trans, here you go. Terminator is located towards the 3 dash n that is downstream and also important here by switching position with terminator, definition of coding and template strands could be reversed okay so 
just based upon where the promoter is and the terminator is you can you can change which is coding strand which is template strand fine now let's come to transcription unit and the gene okay so we see here um this we have done cystrons monocystronic eukaryotes polycystronic prokaryotes okay now in in eukaryotes in eukaryotes we are only talking about in eukaryotes the monocystronic have interrupted coding sequences okay that is what we call as a split gene split genes means they are having exons and interons what what have to be removed from exons and introns introns are interfering introns are interfering so we need to remove the introns okay we need to remove the introns and join the exons together fine so exons are interrupted okay and they are intervening sequences and they are not found in mature rna fine so what is to be done let's see here process of transcription process of transcription three major rnas are there mrna trna rrna okay all of them need to synthesize a pro are needed to synthesize all are needed fine mrna provides template trna brings amino acids and reads genetic code rrna makes the ribosome structure and ribozyme enzyme during translation then one enzyme is there dna dependent rna polymerase what does it do catalyzes transcription okay it catalyzes transcription rna polymerase binds with promoter and it initiates transcription that is called as initiation it is called as initiation and it is going to be using nucleoside triphosphate as a substrate okay nucleoside triphosphate as substrate means what atp gtp all of that okay then for initiation for initiation what do you need sigma factor okay for elongation no factor only enzyme okay and for termination rho factor fine so you have sigma factor no factor there and rho factor clear all right then what has been done then what do you do after this what is done splicing okay so when we see over here first of all cap is added and tail is added correct what is the cap capping is what made up of methyl guanosine triphosphate methyl guanosine triphosphate and it is template independent it is template independent clear and also it is rare it is rare all right what about the tail poly adenylate tail okay poly a a a a a a again this is template independent not complementary to the dna template so finally which are which are which are these children all of these are introns okay all of those are introns and these over here wait this over here 1 2 3 4 okay these are 5 and 6 how many exons are you seeing six exons okay and how many introns are you seeing five introns five introns six exons are going to be finally undergoing that splicing has happened so introns are removed introns are removed 
and exons are joined okay and you have your cap you have your tail fine these are only exons and this is your m rna this is your m rna clear now talking about the enzymes now my class will start laughing now talking about the enzymes which rna chalo let's take a new page quickly let's revise the enzymes rna polymerase RNA polymerase. How many types? How many types are there? One, two, three. The first one which we are doing all in all of this in your textbook. HN RNA makes mRNA. Fine. Then polymerase one, which it makes rRNA. It makes rRNA. Which rRNAs is it making? It's making twenty-eight. Which rRNAs is it making? Twenty-eight S, eighteen S, five point eight S. Then enzyme three, the last one. What is left? tRNA, and also, also snRNA. Short nuclear RNA and five S R RNA. Are you guys able to see this? Everyone able to see this? Perfect. All right. Now that is done. now talking about genetic code in genetic code here we go genetic code everybody let's come to genetic code okay what are we going to be seeing here yeah there is no complementarity no complementarity between nucleotides and amino acids okay that's why this led to the proposition of genetic code that could direct the sequence of amino acid during protein synthesis because there was no complementarity between the rna and the amino acids fine then who all come who is the one most important person who has um, introduced this george gamo gg george gamo okay there were four bases 20 amino acids then it has to be of 4 raised to 3 so there should be three bases in one codon why if there is one base in one codon then only four amino acids could be coded for if there are two bases in one codon then only 16 amino acids could be coded for that's why and total how many amino acids you need 20 you need to be coding for so if there are three bases in one codon then 64 amino acids can be coded for do you have 64 amino acids no you have only 20 amino acids so it's okay if there are more codons you can have more codons you cannot have less codons okay all right so that is what george gamo uh, proved that is what george gamo stated and providing proof that it was a triplet chemical method by hergobin khurana chemical method by hergobin khurana then um marshall nirenberg cell free system for protein synthesis severo okova enzyme was made for making the synthetic synthetic um enzyme of rna so that the uh what do you say the different experiments could be carried out then the fourth one checkerboard method fourth one checkerboard method what will you remember over here kids important ones you have stop codons which is your stop codons uganda u a a u a g u g a stop then start codon a u g and methionine start codon 
स्टार्ट कोड ऑन ए यू जी एंड मिथियोन फाइन वॉट आर दिल अच्छा रिमेम्बर दीज फोर वन टू थ्री फोर ओके ऑल ऑफ दीज कोड ऑन प्लीज रिमेम्बर दीज एंड गो नेक्स्ट सेलियंट फीचर्स ऑफ जेनेटिक कोड कोडॉन इज ट्रिपलेट सिक्सटी वन कोडॉन्स फॉर अमाइनो एसिड्स ओके थ्री डू नॉट कोड फॉर अमाइनो एसिड्स दे आर स्टॉप कोडॉन्स इट इज डी जेनरेट इट इज डी जेनरेट ओके बिकॉज अमाइनो एसिड्स आर कोडेड बाय मोर देन वन कोडॉन वन अमाइनो एसिड वन वन राजा हैज मेनी रानीज डी जेनरेट वन राजा हैज मेनी रानीज डी जेनरेट क्लियर clear then codon is read in a contiguous fashion the codon is read in a contiguous fashion okay codon is read in a contiguous fashion all right then a uh, code is universal any any organism u u u will always be for phenylalanine okay exceptions are found in mitochondria and some protozoan then aug has two functions methionine and initiator methionine and initiator aug fine now let's come to mutations in mutations you have in mutations you have got any small changes okay you have point mutations you have um frame shift mutations so if one nucleotide if one nucleotide changes or if two change okay sorry one or two changes it leads to frame shift this can be insertion it can be deletion okay and if it is three changes then no frame shift hi alisha then no changes clear everyone if it is three then there is no frame shift all right so whew. chalo let's continue yes 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 okay so if there is a change of single base pair in gene for beta globin chain results in damage in the change of amino acid residue what is the change in the amino acid residue glutamate to valine results in sickle cell anemia fine this is all easy clear it can also be deleting this is clear easy all right so you can see here how where is the changes changes will always be changes will be seen sorry changes will be seen after insertion or deletion changes will be seen after insertion or after deletion before that nothing changes okay so whatever changes are happening are after after before everything stays the same all right so you have a frame shift insertion or deletion if it is 3 or multiples of 3 then frame shift remains unaltered okay now next trna adapter molecule baap re such a big chapter such a big chapter akash beta hum yahan we come here to study okay if you don't want to study you can go somewhere else you come you come here to study akash all my kids here on the chat box have come here to study yes or no kids all my kids here on the chat box has come here to study yes or no Yes, chalo guys, let's begin. 
the rna the trna molecule what all are you seeing here one this is sorry this is the three dash end for amino acid acceptor fine then this over here is the anticodon anticodon loop it is going to be complementary to codon on the mrna fine complementary to the codon on the mrna all right okay now also the first for initiation of translation there is going to be a specific rna that is a initiator trna okay there are no trnas for stop codons okay important structure here please children pay attention the secondary structure of trna has been looking it looks like a clover leaf okay and a compact module which looks like an inverted l actually so secondary structure okay and the tertiary or you can say um 3 2d structure 3d structure we'll say it that way okay 2d structure is clover leaf 3d structure is inverted l inverted l all right perfect good kids now let's come to translation what is translation it refers to the process of polymerization of amino acids to form a polypeptide fine first thing first thing what do you need to do you need to charge the trna it's also called as amino acylation so how is this done how is this going to be done charging the trna how is this going to be done first what do you need first what do we need to do initiation sorry first is going to be initiation how is initiation done how is initiation done tell me how are we going to do the process of initiation who will tell me this can you go slow theek hai translation i'll open translation over here and we'll do it from there mm okay so look over here kids what all are we going to require the mrna is required mrna will have a start codon it will have a region which is coding for the polypeptide it will have a stop codon there are also untranslated regions which are untranslated regions regions before start codon and after stop codon these are our untranslated regions fine so translation also just like transcription has three processes initiation elongation and termination okay so this is how we're going to form or synthesize a protein what how exactly is initiation taking place one activation of the amino acid two transferring that amino acid to the trna transferring it to trna chalo guys now Okay, chalo. Now, how do we do this? How do we activate the amino acid? Amino acid is going to be attached to first. What happens? What do we need to do first? We are going to take the amino acid, and we are going to uh, the amino acid needs to be activated. So we will attach it with the adenosine triphosphate. Now, in this adenosine triphosphate, two phosphates are used up. so what are you left with what are you left with you want to attach the amino acid with the enzyme you want to attach amino acid with the enzyme so yes my mind four year old child very good so you want to attach the amino acid with the enzyme so what is used up two phosphates are used up what are you left with you're left with amp 
so now what you have your amino acid with the enzyme with the amp together this is called as amino acid amp enzyme complex okay all right so in in order to bring that amino acid towards the enzyme we had to utilize two phosphates okay so out of atp if two phosphates are used you are left with amp so you have your amino acid you have your amp and now you have your enzyme all of these three are going to be taken towards the trna so the whole complex is taken towards the trna once it's taken towards the trna who goes away amp and enzyme go away amp and enzyme go away so what are you left with the trna and the amino acid you are left with trna and amino acid correct and this process is called as charging of trna ha bachche yaad kar rahe hain school bus very good aranta this is called as charging of trna so now once once the trna has been charged once it has been charged now what the initiator trna will first go and bind with the mrna initiator trna it will always carry the amino acid methionine okay then mrna will then bind with the small unit subunit of the rna a uh, small subunit of the ribosome then comes your large subunit also large subunit also comes large subunit has sites epa the large subunits has the sites epa epa correct this is for exit this is for arrival this is for polypeptide formation yes exit of the trna arrival of the trna and the polypeptide formation correct then what is going to be okay so now you have your one this initiator trna and one more trna according to this codon okay who is responsible for forming the peptide bond who is responsible for forming the peptide bond ribozyme ribozyme will help in forming the peptide bond fine then what happens the trna shift the trna shift their sites once they shift the site once they shift the site the trna will go it will transfer the amino acid to the second trna so now this is your dipeptide which has formed now your dipeptide has formed fine where will methionine be where will you find methionine at the top you will find methionine as at the top it was the first amino acid in the whole chain all the other ones are attached from below fine class okay now tell me how does the process stop for stopping how does the process stop with what factor stops by release factor release factor release factor helps it stop clear clear now let's come to human genome project human genome project are you all able to see my screen tell me please tell me please if you are able to see my screen we will quickly revise this yes able to see my screen so it was a mega project haploid is 3 to 10 raised to 9 base pairs our cell to sequence one base pair it costed 3 dollars so to sequence haploid cell it cost 9 billion dollars okay the project started in 1990 took 19 years completed in 2003 they were able what was the aim to to find out disease information to calculate 20 to 25000 genes and it takes 3 3300 books to store all of this so this led to formation of bioinformatics they also took care of lc what is lc ethical legal social issues fine Co
coordinated by US Department of Energy and National Institute of Health. Okay? Who pitched in? Or kisne paise contribute kiya? Who, was, who else was contributing money? Welcome Trust in UK, Japan, France, Germany and China. The project completed in the year 2003. Then, other non-human were also sequenced like bacteria, yeast, the nematode. Okay, Drosophila and plants also. Also, these were sequenced along with humans. Fine. What were the goals? Identify all the 20 to 25 genes in human. Determine the sequences of the 3 billion base pairs. Store the information in the database. Improve tools for data analysis. And transfer the technologies to private sector. Paise to sara private mein Alright. Then, how are these done? What were the methodologies? EST. The children who study only how much is needed. Sequencing only that part of DNA which will make the RNA. Sequence annotations. Children who study the whole portion. Sequencing entire genome. Coding part also, non-coding part also. Fine. DNA is cut into fragments. And the fragments are inserted into host with the help of vector. Which were the vector? Back and yak. Back and yak. B bacterial yeast artificial chromosome. Yes, Majita. And host is going to be bacteria or yeast. Sequencing was done by Sanger's method in overlapping fashion. Alright. Largest known human gene. Dystrophin. Where is it? At 2.4 million bases. Largest known human gene is dystrophin. Alright. Total number of genes is around 30,000. 99.9% .9 nucleotide bases are exactly the same. Okay. So all of us are exactly the same 99.9 .9 nucleotides. Only 0.1% is what makes us different. 50% of the functions of genes are still known, unknown even after spending 9 billion dollars. Batao. Chromosome 1 has most genes. Chromosome Y has fewest genes. Important kids. Please Human Genome Project say every year an MCQ comes. I will share these notes on Telegram. You will all download it and um, go through these notes. Okay. Single nucleotide polymorphism. Around 1.4 million locations have single base DNA differences. Like this. Okay. Shruti, don't hate HGP. I put it all in notes. You download the PDF. I will pakka share it and you can learn it. Acha, patao, next topic kya hai? Tell me what is the next topic. Next topic is... Next topic is... Lac operon. Regulation of gene expression. Quickly, I am doing it from my notes. Yes, Jinendra, I will share it. Okay. Regulation in prokaryotes is during binding of the promoter. In eukaryotes, regulation happens at four levels. Transcription, processing, transport of mRNA from nucleus to cytoplasm and translation. Yes or no? Perfect. Yes. Now, E. coli uses lactose for energy. E. coli is a very smart bacteria. If lactose is present, it will make the enzyme. So it can metabolize lactose. If lactose is not present, it will not make the enzyme. Fine. Then in E. coli, lactose is converted to galactose and glucose. But if there is no lactose, they will not make the enzyme because they are smart bacteria. Now, what do we remember for, what do we remember for lac operon, everyone who will tell me. What do we remember for lac operon, tell me. Lac operon, what will you remember? Manish, yes, you will remember Piposia. Very good kids, you will remember Piposia. Excellent, Piposia for lac operon. P is promoter, I is the inhibitor gene which makes the regulatory protein. Okay, either it can be inducing or it can be repressing. O is going to be the operator. Z codes for beta carotene. Y codes for permease. 
A codes for transacetylase. Transacetylase. So, when lactose is present, when lactose is present, okay, what will happen? When lactose is present, what will happen? Lactose will bind to the promote to the protein. Lactose will bind to the regulatory protein. Lactose behaves as an inducer. Lactose is behaving as the inducer. It is going to make the whole operon as an inducible operon. So is the operator switched off? Is the operator blocked? No. So operator is on. When operator is on, the enzyme can slide. When the enzyme can slide, transcription will happen and all the three enzymes are formed. Yes, but when lactose is absent, when lactose is absent, this gene makes the protein and the protein will go and attach to the operator. So if the protein attaches to the operator, operator will be turned off. And when operator is turned off, there will be no sliding. And if there is no sliding, then there is no transcription. No sliding, then there will be no transcription. Clear? So here it is comparatively when lactose is absent, when lactose is present. Okay, everyone. Last DNA fingerprinting. In DNA fingerprinting, again I am teaching from notes. We can quickly get this done with. <laughs> yes, Seema. Okay. Introduced by Alec Jaffrey and Dr. Lalji Singh in India. Okay. DNA can have major part of DNA, bulk DNA, 99.9%. .9 and other small part, useless part, junk part, satellite DNA, 0.1%. It contains 0.1% repetitive sequences. They can be variable number tandem repeats. Okay. How many? 10 to 60. Short tandem repeats. 1 to 10. Correct. How do you perform the process of DNA fingerprinting? Chalo. Sample of blood is collected. Okay. DNA is collected because it has WBCs. Then... Break it the DNA into fragments. Fragments are separated by gel electrophoresis. Then take all the DNA fragments into a nitrocellulose membrane. That's called as southern blotting. Create hybrids by using probe. Okay. What is the probe? Probe is radioactive labeled VNTR probe. Radioactive label VNTR probe. Okay. Yes. I think my chat box is running slow. Have you all gone and liked the video? Or I have to tell you guys. Everybody gone and liked the video? Alright. Okay. Probes are going to then shine. Because the hybrids will be made. Which are going to be double. Achha. What is used for making the probe shine? What is used to make the probe shine? Ethidium bromide. What color is seen? Uh, sorry. What is used to make the probe shine? It was radioactive probe. Radioactive probe, so autoradiography probes will shine. Okay? And the, the surprise that I was talking to you all about. Surprise that I was talking to all of you about. Something, some great news for all of you who are appearing neat 2022. Let's come to that. I told, I promised all of you that there is a good news for all of you who are appearing neat 2022. First, have you gone and liked the video? Have you shared it and have you subscribed to our channel? Then I will tell you the news. Okay. I want to tell you that um, at Vedantu, all of you who have... Sorry. Yes. So, all of you who um, are now appearing for NEET 2022, the last 10 days, a superb test series has come out. All subjects, 10 papers... For the last 10 days, most important questions which you don't want to miss out on. Okay. Only at rupees 999. That's it. Nine, only 999 rupees. Test series for all of you. The last 10 days, the most important MCQs as a part of this test series. So you can solve it. You make sure that out of all the books, 
you are not missing out on the most important MCQs. Only rupees nine nine nine. Yes, kids, completely worth it. Okay. ये कुछ तो ढूंढ रहा है. I am not saying anything. Siri. All right. So kids, don't miss this. Okay. The test series, the final test series, final ten days. You don't want to miss out on it. Okay. Most important questions. Go ahead, buy it at only nine nine nine. It's on Vedantu page. Uh, easily you'll be able to find it. Fine. And all of those who feel that you want some extra guidance, you want some the some last minute push also. Still we have the CC Lite option for you guys. Okay, recorded le le sessions are there. Again, coming with many MCQs at only eighteen hundred. Okay. Right now, test series is a very good option for any of you right here. Okay. Any time of the day. Uh, you will be having an option to solve any paper that you want to, and the best part is, you know that you're solving the most important questions, which are most likely to be um, coming in somewhat form in your NEET exam. Yes, so very important questions. Um, the questions have been specially selected by all of our master teachers, and the test series have been made. Correct. If you guys want some mentorship, you guys want some help, you need some lectures, sessions, recordings. And assignments, if you need in these last few days, then you have the crash course light also. It is only at eighteen hundred. Okay, for everything, the links are there in the description box. But remember one thing: to get these rates, to get everything at these rates. Remember, what did I tell you? Crash the test series. Most important kids, I want you to pay attention right now. Test series. Okay, test series are. Okay, how much is it for? Only nine nine nine. Only nine nine nine. Fine, everyone, join that. Ah, uh, don't forget to use the coupon code so you get your discount. It is S I P R O. Yes, everyone, don't forget to use the coupon code S S I P R O. Last ten days, give it your best. All right, kids. I will see you all, and I have already put our schedule on the ah uh, on the Telegram group. I will see all of you tomorrow. for the chapter of cockroach okay so come with me with your ncert textbooks and until then be consistent be on our channel your revision is happening absolutely awesome okay bye kids